quite like one that focuses on intergenerational equity. But have a listen to the International Monetary Fund. This is them talking, this is their concept of sustainable development. Only sustainable economic growth can generate the additional resources needed to address environmental problems. Ideally, the environmental benefits from virtuous cycles in which sustainable economic growth reduces poverty, increases resource availability to improve the environment, and is itself reinforced by these trends. Have a look at that statement. Do you think that that statement lead, um, is lending itself more to point M or point C? What do you think? M. Yeah, that's right. I think we've got what I've been trying to sort of um, point out to here. They are sliding that concept of sustainability towards point M. So what you can see here is depending upon how you interpret sustainable development, and it's one of the reasons why some people have regarded sustainable development just as a sort of, um, a, just as a buzzword, which has come to mean nothing, because it just depends upon how you're defining. It's a concept that's open to interpretation. It's a contested concept. That's what we've always got to remember when we're using a term such as sustainable development. Some people want a steeper gradient towards point M, and some want a less steep um, um, development, so um, a gradient. So people like David Suzuki, for instance, would be right down at C, at C because he wants zero growth. He argues that we need to sort of zero economic growth if we're going to protect the environment. So you should keep that in mind maybe when you're actually thinking of your essay, the way that different people interpret this concept. And so there's another lovely little quote from uh, um, uh, Robin Davidson in her quarterly essay about a year ago, which sort of sums up, again, a lot of what you read in these debates can be sort of seen. We don't use these terms, catastrophes and cornucopians, but you can actually read it into a lot of statements about contemporary environmental controversies. And I want you to think about that as well when you listen to O'Connor and MacDonald tomorrow. There are people whose faith in technology is strong enough for them to believe that there are no limitations on us as a species. We will colonize other planets or find new sources of energy. Our big brains will save us. Others take a gloomy view that we are hardwired for disaster, the, uh, the catastrophes. That wherever we've been, we've destroyed our environment and we will always do so. Coded into this view is a tacit belief that our fate is determined by our genes and our brains. Far from saving us are the very organs that have become an evolutionary disadvantage because we are using them to destroy the resources on which we live. That is the planet. And so the key for us here is to see whether or not we can actually sort of move between these two extremes on the sort of um, on the paradigm between cornucopianism or um, uh, and catastrophism, or whether or not you should stay at one extreme or the other. So what I've tried to do today is I've tried to ask that question, how do we come to interpret landscapes in such different ways and come to such different conclusions? And the first example I gave you from Australia's colonial history is that one of the reasons why we came to see the landscape in the way we did was because it helped us create myths about our national origins. It gave us a sense of identity, which is still very important in terms of the way Australians see themselves and the way we behave and the way we act, from Anzac Day to the sporting fields. The second example was more this issue of what Richard has been calling political economy. Different social, political and economic and ideological interests see the environment in different ways. And part of what you're doing in this course is trying to assess these different ways of looking at it. So what I've tried to give you today is just a continuum on which you can actually place a lot of people. Okay, so I'll leave it there and uh, we'll see you at the panel tomorrow.